Okay, for this screencast, what I want to do is I want to talk about um, problem three, and there there was an issue really with uh, the handling the large data set. So so basically, um, I created the script here already: clear CLC, close all, and then I, and I read in the data. And then normally, what uh, we had and what we did last week was we just pulled out the entire first column, the entire second column, and the entire third column. And then what we did is we said, okay, I'm gonna loop through. <clears throat> I'm actually just going to do a plot three of X, Y, and Z. You don't need to loop through for this and plot blue stars. Um, and, and that should create a, a figure here of your blue stars. Now, the reason why this works is because if I put this in debug mode and hit play, Y is, oh great, of course it's not going to work. Let's see. Nope, doesn't like it. Okay, well then I'm just going to hit quit here. I'm going to type in who's. So X is a 10,000 by one. Which means that's a very very long vector, and if I uh, if I run the whole thing, uh, damn, I still have this stupid debug point. Continue. I'm gonna put this over here, and this over here. So again, if I type in who, z is again a 10,000 by one. Now in the example we did in the class for uh, 2D interpolation, well, we assumed that you know we had z z, which was you know an n n by m matrix. And we don't have that. So what we need to do is we actually need to translate the problem into that form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uh, text file I sent you. Um, all files here, X, Y, Z. So if you look um, at, at the X coordinate, the minimum X coordinate is negative 3.14. And then it increases monotonically until it hits um, 3.14 and then it goes negative again. Now if you look here at this line number, that's 100 lines, which means there's 100 data points between minus 3.14 and then um, 3.14. Now in this case, I, the data set I gave you is absolutely perfect. So it's um, every single increment from here to here was obviously created with the lint space command. But let's say, let's assume you've got a data set that's not like that. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to call this long x, long y, and long z. And the reason why I do that is because these are kind of the, the long uh, data sets that I'm going to get. So what I want to do is I want to cast problem into a, a mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, look for how many data points are in x, right? So I'm going to say while, and I'm going to initialize um, x, x um, let me call it something else. I'll call it um, x first, is just the uh, just long x of 1. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to initialize a counter, idx equals 1. And I'm going to say while x first, and then I need x second x second. I'm, I'm making this up on the fly. Um, and this is why I was saying this is actually pretty tough, so I, I wanted to do this size for you because this is this is too hard. Um, x second is long x of 2. So while x first is less than x second, keep going. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say idx equals idx plus 1. I'm going to say x first is long x of idx and x first is long x of idx plus 1. And so if I run that, oh sorry, x second, x second, what I should get is idx is 100, right? So what happened was is it looped through and it checked, it checked the, it checked this number, x first, and this number. And it said, okay, this number is less than that number. And then it checked this number and this number, and it said, okay, this number is less than that number. And it went on down, and finally it found out, you know, hey, this number is not less than that number, so the system quit. So then using this IDX, I'm going to say, okay, our big X, not our long X, is actually long X from 1 to 100. And then I'm going to, and I'm going to make, is this a column? Yeah, it's already a column. So there we go. So if I hit F5 here, if I type in whose, long X is a 10,000 by 1, but big X is just a 100 by 1. Now th at this point we need to do the same thing for Y, but Y is a little bit more difficult, right? So um, if we look at Y, Y is negative 3.14 and it's negative 3.14 the entire time that X is changing and then at some point 
it changes to a different number. Now granted, again, I gave you the data set, it looks very nice, so x is obviously equal to y, but let's assume that you don't know that. So what you want to do is you actually want to just loop for idx equals um, 1 to um, length of long y. And then what you're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to assume that y is at zero's um, length of x comma 1. Um, if whoever gave you this data set, I'm just going to assume, hey, you know, you at least know how many um, it is. And actually, let, let's just assume it's not. Let's make this really inefficient. So I'm actually just going to initialize it as uh, I did before, long x of 1. Uh, sorry, long y of 1. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to check and say, okay, if, let's see, we want to check, we want to check and see if, this number here is different than this number here. So what I need is I need a, a y counter equals one. And I'm gonna say if y of y counter is not equal to y of long y of idx, I'm gonna concatenate in a column y, uh, long y, of idx and then I'm going to increment my y counter equals y counter plus one okay so then basically yeah and it's going to give me a uh, crap because it uh, y changes on every loop but let's see if this works so we should have who's so yeah there we go so x is a 100 by 1 y is a 100 by 1 so if I type in y y went from negative 3.14 to 3.14 x went from negative 3.14 to 3.14. So basically what's happening is is I'm looping through the entire long y data set. So that's 10,000 data points. And then what I'm doing is I'm checking the current number in my big y vector and seeing if it's the same as my long y vector. And if it's not, what that means is that I went from one number, say negative 3.14, to say negative 3.07 and then I concatenate that number that I just checked and then I increment the y counter. So now I check the second number in my big y matrix. And so what we can do is we can actually um, step through this. So if you see y is this negative 3.104, but now when I hit next, now y is negative 3.1407. If I hit continue again, y is still that, but when I hit step, now it's negative 3.0147. So then it goes through there and um, and we get the, the y vector. So now we have our x and y vectors. So now the question is, okay, how do we get our, our z vector? So we know how long x is, right? So um, I'm going to call it lx is length of x, and we know ly is um, length of y. So basically what I want to do is I want to do another loop where I loop through one length of long z, and if you again, if you look at the data set, essentially what happens is, is these first numbers, the y coordinate is the same, and the x coordinate changes. So that means what you want to do is the first lx numbers is the first row. So I'm going to make a matrix zeros, and I'm going to make it length of x comma length, or I guess I, since I made those variables, lx comma ly. And um, so we're going to loop through the whole thing, and then we're going to have a, a row counter is 1, and a column counter is 1. And I'm just going to step through here, and this is sort of inverting that last problem we did. So I'm going to say zz of row counter comma column counter equals long z of idx, okay? And then I'm going to increment my row counter equals row counter plus one. However, if row counter is greater than lx, that means row counter is one, and column counter equals column counter plus one. So let's hit that, see if that works. So now if I type in whose, there we go. I've got x is a 100 by 1, y is a 100 by 1, the zz is a 100 by 100. So if I'm lucky, I should be able to just do 
y y comma x x equals mesh grid big x big y or sorry big y big x mesh let's do a hold on mesh x x y y z z and I should and there I do and I do so I finally so that took a lot of coding and a lot of work but I finally casted the problem into my uh, what I had before so now you can do this right you have big X so you do the while loop for um, uh, IDX to get X0 and X1 you do a while loop for JDX to get Y0 and Y1 and then you use IDX and JDX to get Z11 etc out of ZZ because now ZZ is a matrix and then just compute the three linear interpolations to get um, Z star and, and you're done okay uh, remember you also have to do polynomial interpolation so polynomial interpolation you you can just do up you can do up here with long X and long Y so you want to do your polynomial interpolation up here and then compare it with your 2d interpolation here so again um, all of your codes are going to look the same um, try and understand this if you can um, but basically here we uh, looped through X to find we looped through long X to get uh, big X and then we looped through long Y to get big Y and then we looped through long Z to get um, ZZ which is um, a matrix um, so that was pretty tough so I thought I'd just give it to you um, and I guess we will uh, call it a day good luck